now that we've got the parts, let's uh, let's see what it takes to install it. All right, so here we are to take down the front shock towers. We're going to need to get to some bolts in the upper engine compartment. Those bolts are going to be located on the driver's side, and here it happens to be under the engine computer. I'm going to show you how to get that out. It is the exact same thing on the passenger side. It is under the power distribution block on the uh, front passenger side under these covers. Right now what we have is everything is really loose and available so you don't have to watch 45 minutes of me messing with little brackets and, and whatever. So we kind of soft put everything together. Start with this. Uh, the airbox top cover. So on the side Right here, you're going to notice these pins. So if you didn't know how, you're going to pop the pin on here. And then on the other side, it's exactly the same thing. You're going to pop the pin over. These pins flit here. So the top of your airbox is going to come up and it comes off. So you want to take the PCV hose off. You're going to do so. There's this kind of serrated top and bottom. You squeeze and the sides bow out, which helps you take that off. There's going to be an electrical connection here to the solenoid that's going to control the front airbox flap. Over here, you've got this oil, uh, oil fill extender. This is really easy to take off as well. There's a tab here. You push the tab in, and then this just pulls, pulls right out. This obviously is your intake. And this whole airbox here on the back, you'll see here, there's two recessed points. It mounts on these two tabs right here. This part of the air box pushes on these tabs. So, so far that part is, is particularly easy. Getting this part off is, obviously there's a, you know, a flathead screwdriver. There's uh, two band clamps that hold that on. Remember, there is this vacuum line that is going to come into the bottom of the solenoid. You're going to pull that off. <coughs> Again, disconnect this. And at that point, that's what it looks like underneath. It's pretty. So let's uh, let's move over to the driver's side now, real quick. Here we are on the driver's side. Uh, you've got the engine computer. The engine computer is held in this area. I've already moved it out. There's a tab here, there's a tab here, and there's a tab here. Simply, this is in under these tabs like this, right? It is under these tabs. These tabs get pulled back, and it just releases up. There's tabs on the back here, it slides in. These tabs comes out. Now, if you want to disconnect the computer, this levered arm comes up. And as you continue to swivel it up, it'll eject the actual electrical connection from the engine computer. A nice wiggle. You're going to have to pull it straight off. On, on When I was doing it, the bottom kept catching. So again, rotate it all the way out. It'll give you a little bit of a positive click. And you're just going to slowly kind of wiggle and work its way off. Now, after years and years of being on the car, expect it to be dirty, expect it to be difficult uh, to get out of the way. We're going to come back to right now. Uh, here's the weather stripping. Pull the weather stripping off. That's basic. Okay. Wow. You know how to do that. All right. These two connectors are sitting in the box. There's a tab right here. This is slid on. Here's the tab. Don't get a screwdriver and push down in that, you'll break it. Ask me how I know. Don't mind looking right there. So, you're going to push down and this is going to slide out. Just a simple clip, it releases. This one is a pull tab clip. You're going to pull the red back as I've done here. You're going to push down, you're going to hear a positive click. It's going to separate. At this point in time, you can swing your wiring harness here without your engine computer on the driver's side, out of the way. And then you're going to come back to your ECU box tray. There is three 10 millimeter bolts located here, 
here and here. You're gonna remove them, the 10 millimeter bolts, and everything's gonna slide out of the way. And now you have a nice, full access. Here we go. This is one strut tower bolt. There's another strut tower bolt, and yes, the other one, you can't see it. It's underneath the front strut tower brace. Fantastic. The excitement is overwhelming. We're gonna go over now to the passenger side of the car where we're going to repeat the exact same thing. This is our, our power distribution box. You'll see right here, this is in, in red. You have a pole here. If you wanted to jump start the car, you're gonna put a positive battery cable or charge cable there. And right here, you're gonna see black that's negative. You'd put your negative cable there. So for the sake of this conversation, obviously we were professional. We disconnected the battery because otherwise uh, a lot of dangerous things we can happen. Remove which the floor mat. And this panel here is really easily removed. You can get a screwdriver or really, you can just kind of get in there with your hands and pull this panel out the way. It exposes then the battery as you can see right here, right? The battery's right here, pretty simple. Step in there, loosen it 10 millimeter, really easy. Ground terminal pops right off, Yeah. tuck it anyway, out of the way. So moving on. So we've, as you can see, the power has been removed from the box. The negative has also been removed from the box. So the box is what you would call passive or neutral. There's nothing here. Um, we do have uh, these three power lines that are coming into it, but the box is not grounded. Um, if you ended up grounding it, that obviously would not be fantastic. Anyway, um, these are 10 millimeter bolts. When, let me help you so you don't forget. The white goes on the top. This 10 millimeter bolt, the green goes in the middle. This 10 millimeter bolt, the black goes at the bottom. So again, that's white, green, black. Move those out of the way. There's a 10 millimeter bolt that goes here. You're gonna wanna get that 10 millimeter bolt out. This right here is a 13 millimeter bolt. You're gonna wanna remove that. So the other thing that's gonna happen is right here, you wanna remove this whole cage right where my finger's at up here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt here that we've removed. There's a 10 millimeter bolt down here that we've removed. We've removed the 10 millimeter bolt down there. Let me get my pointer so it's easier. The 10 millimeter bolt down there. This cage will not move because there is one last hiding 10 millimeter bolt and it, the bolt is hiding right there. Obviously we've removed it with uh, really simple, takes really no time at all once you know what you're doing, but we didn't know what we were doing so it took two hours. So here's what you end up getting into. These two boxes separate, okay? And when they separate, you're gonna have access to this particular bolt right here. But to get the boxes to separate, there is a clip here that needs to be pushed back. And then on this leg, this leg slides down in here, okay? And there's another pole and that slides down in the back. And that's gonna slide down here. So it's gonna look like this. So once you get this stuff disconnected, you're gonna pull up and you're gonna be like, what in God's green earth is stopping this from coming out? It is this right here that you need to really get some gusto on and try to separate the box because there's not really any good way you're going to get back here. We, we ended up realizing what was going on and got a screwdriver in and pried the box, wiggled it, and it just came out. When you know how to do it, um, it is still incredibly complicated and will take you forever. So just know that this is what's holding you up just really three security points. Security point one, right here, you have a nut that's gonna hold this transfer bar down for the electricity from one plate to the next. But then two and three, you're gonna be stuck in there. Anyway, as you work it, 
push in here comes out separates once you have this out you can swear and throw it across the garage like i did it's pretty robust um and then you're going to remove your power cord and set that out of the way and then at that point this entire box will swing out of the way there and you'll notice now we are here on this side to get our three strut tower bolts out. We're gonna notice one bolt is right here, the other bolt is right here, and yes, the third bolt is underneath the strut tower brace assembly. And we will now get to how we're gonna get that off the car. So on to the next step. We over on the passenger side, we have removed the power distribution block we have gone and exposed the cross member bolts that we're going to get to which are located here 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 but there's two cross member bolts that we're going to have to get that are underneath this rain tray and to get that out unfortunately we're going to have to take off the windshield wiper and so getting the windshield wipers off is not too terrible of a task, but you can make it a lot easier on yourself if you have a two-legged puller. Um, just a few dollars, and I noticed it made this a lot easier. Otherwise, otherwise you're in there and you're, you're trying to wiggle and yank and twist and pull up and do this whole thing to get the wiper out. If you're using a puller, it's actually not too bad. You're gonna come in, you're gonna pop the cap off this is a 16 millimeter, it's a 16 millimeter nut that you're gonna find on there. Come in, take the nut off, take the nut off, 16 millimeter. What you're seeing right now is the top of the puller is on the stud and the bottom hooks are on the wiper. And then once you run this down, you will get the wiper blade to pop off. All right, so I just popped the wiper blade loose with the puller. Let me show you a little bit better kind of off the car what exactly you're achieving this these are getting underneath and then you want to make sure this part is going on the bolt and then as you tighten down it yanks it off makes a really good way to go and get the wiper blades off next so we're, we're all come set back. now we've gotten both the wiper blades out and this plastic cover is a little bit of a friction fit in the corners so you're gonna kind of want to go along there and catch the corners and pull it right out pretty easy removal so here's where we're at we now have taken off the windshield wipers we have taken off the rain tray plastic cover now we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then on the other side, the six, seven, eight on the other side. These are M10 triple squares, so we're going to pull those out and then get ready to go on to the next step. All right, so we got out the last triple square to go ahead and end up removing to help us go ahead and remove the front strut tower brace um, so we can get to, remember, we're doing all this just so we can get to our last bolt on either side. Uh, for our suspension uh, a unique situation here so on 
once you've taken out these eight bolts, the only thing that's holding this in on the passenger side, it is this contraption. And over here on the driver's side, it is the same. It's a series of tabs that are holding the bar in. You have to remove these as this is press fitting the, the cross bar in, otherwise it won't lift up and remove. Let me give you a little bit of a better uh, line of sight on that. But now, as you can see, there's a tab here, there's a tab here, but on the back, you can see there's a tab on the back side for them as well. So there's a tab in the front and then a tab in the back and then the same thing. A tab in the front here and then a tab in the back. And then this, you know, closes in on itself. This tab comes down here. And it's pretty like-minded on the passenger side as well, where it's the sequence of tabs that fit into fit into here. This sits here and there's a sequence of tabs in the front and then the sequence of tabs in the back as well. So just kind of wanted to show you that. Once you get in there, it'll make sense, but you're getting in there with a pick and this is, I don't want to put it back in because it's hard to get up, but uh, it sits in here like this and is it sits in there like that, and then you're going to use your pick and then take that out. But here we go to start the, uh, the suspension work. 17 millimeter bolts. We're going to get those off and um, pull the tire off. Go from there. All right, we're back. So I put the tire under the body. Um, I do that just for safety. We have our jack stands, but still. So here's where we're at. Right here, obviously, is the spring, and here's the shock. And it, I've not seen shocks in, in this particular fashion before, so this is a little bit different. But as we rotate around and take a look at what we're dealing with, and sorry, the camera angle is a little bit difficult, we can see that these, let me back up here, so to me, what makes sense is to take the wishbone off here. Right here is another connection to it, and it all ties back in. Uh, this unit has the front sway bar, and this connected to the front control arm. So it makes sense to me is to Disconnect the sway bar, but there's two points where I can disconnect the sway bar Up top and then down on the back. I feel disconnecting it up top gives me more room for new maneuverability I've never done this, but it seems like that would give me the most maneuverability I pulled the brake line out of the way, so that shouldn't be an issue um, But these are 16 millimeters and to get this bolt out, that's 18. So in theory, if I take this bolt out, the entire shock arm is connected to the sway to the front control arm here, and then the sway bar here. So in theory, air quotes, huge theory. Um, if I take those two two bolts out, we should be able to get the control arm assembly to come down and then okay so, so just some helpful tips before this is obviously the springs are in but some helpful tips post uh, install uh, up here getting um, these upper control arms out you're going to want to do that uh, the two prong gear puller and then you should be able to get them to pop out and then we just use the screwdriver or bolt method to pop them the rest of the way. 16 millimeter, 16 millimeter, really easy. Right here, 
the sway bar connection. We're going to take this one off. This is a 16 millimeter. This is a 16 millimeter. But it's worth noting that that 16 millimeter is a multi-point uh, bolt. Uh, moving on, we're going to take this out. 18 millimeter, 18 millimeter on the other side. Uh, we're going to take this entire bracket off coming back over here 18 millimeter 18 millimeter and then you're going to want a uh, a strut separator or to get something in there to separate this 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 whole arm is going to separate from uh, the shock assembly and then obviously up top we have we have our bolts that uh, are going to need to get removed these three bolts um not too difficult the only other thing is obviously you're just going to want to get this brake line uh, out of the way uh, for all that but those are a couple helpful tips before we get into it so here's how I did it all right we took the 18 millimeter nut out the bolt is still in on the arm up here as we follow the arm up this was that 16 millimeter bolt I took that off and then as we continue to follow up there's the spring into uh, the body compartment where that is uh, tightened down to the shock tower. So what I did to take some of the tension off was I got a jack and I jacked this up until it was roughly level. Um, obviously there's still a huge amount of tension on these bolts and I wouldn't suspect that the tension would be able to be released until we head up into the engine compartment which is where we have to then remove the three uh, bolts out of the strut tower. So we're going to remove these bolts and then that should take some of the tension off. The only thing that I kind of want to keep an eye on is it looks like here's a pilot uh, hole so the orientation of this shock obviously is going to be important. It's only going to go back in one way. Um, but something to take note of. So we're going to get in here and these bolts are a 13 millimeter. So I'm going to try to loosen these, which it won't loosen, but anyway. Yeah, got to get something a little bit harder. So we're going to loosen those bolts uh, and then see if we're able to free up the unit. We're going to have to come up and take the sway bar part out. Um, there is still a ton of tension. What I'm trying to do is relieve the tension with the jack to put the arm at kind of a neutral position uh, where there's not a ton of load. We are getting the upper bolt out doing the exact same thing. As you can see, a little bit difficult to do this one-handed, but we're getting the bolt to come out just using the ratchet and taking it in the loosening position. Again, I'm sorry, it is so difficult to do this one-handed. We've taken as much tension off there as we can, but the shock is still being held into place pretty good. It loosened up. But uh, once we pull this bolt out here, we should have a little bit more luck maneuvering the shock around. So let me finish this up and we'll check back in. Oh, as right. even though we uh, took off the upper bolts, as soon as we took out the, uh, the 16 millimeter bolt right here, the entire shock uh, was freed up and dropped down. You'll notice that these inserts are threaded. Although they're threaded, the, the bolt does not thread in. Perhaps it's meant to help do what we did, which is the backing out of the bolt with a ratchet and it helps it come out. Um, I thought that was just a notable thing to say. So we've removed the bottom bolt from the bottom control arms. We've removed the uh, front sway bar connection, which now allows our entire um, shock and spring strut apparatus here uh, to move freely, right? So the front strut. So there's not enough travel 
uh, with just disconnecting on the bottom, which we had to do anyway. So now uh, the next thing we're going to do is disconnect the upper control arms from the uh, front arm unit here. So I spray a little penetration lube in there. These are ball joint fittings. This bolt runs through here and puts tension on the carve out in the neck of those bolts. So I spray a little penetration lube, 16 millimeter on each side. We're going to take this bolt out. Um, loosen these uh, 16 millimeter nuts, not actually, uh, and then see if we can't get this bolt out. Go from there, I'll check back in and I'll let you know how we're doing here in a minute. Okay, so we took the 16 millimeter nut off and then the bolt came almost all the way out. Uh, and where it got stuck, obviously, I've seen people kind of, you know, in the past use screwdrivers or whatnot. What's always worked for me. I just got a pair of uh, channel locks, clamped it on the end, close to the neck, and then I'm doing this one-handed, so this is not fantastic, but just give her a tap, boom, out it comes. So right now we've got these units free. Uh, well, they're still friction fitted in there, but these, um, now we're gonna get these to pull out, and then in theory, this whole arm should move. We should be able to get our uh, front strut and uh, spring assembly out of there um all right so let me get back at this and check back in okay so the pounding continues uh so again we've got the um jack to take some of the weight off you really kind of have to be careful pounding on these units because there's the you know the control arm has a ball and it pivots in there so you want to try to keep the beading on this part to a minimum if you can we've spread this open and I'm if I'm not mistaken they make a suspension fork tool that you can put in here that's supposed to pry them out but what I did was found a big ass bolt that fit and I pound it with a hammer, which I can't hold the camera and pound at the same time. So you can see the amount that this came. I had a bolt here and a heavy hammer, and I just pound it up on the bolt and force this out. Obviously used a good amount of penetration lube. So that's where we're at. Uh, with any luck, a little bit more penetration lube. The, the real... Um, important thing is to keep a spreader in here and don't push it too far you can see when it's moving it's going to take the tension off the spreader really kind of helps move it little penetration lube bolt underneath pound it on the head of the bolt pushed it right up so well i mean i say push it right up but well, i was here for a while but it it got going so that's where we're, we're gonna try to come over here and get the spreader in there a little bit and do the same thing and then we'll check back in. Back on the other side and I thought I'd show you a neat little trick to get the upper control arms off. If you remember this tool, it's a it's a two-legged uh, um, gear puller and we use this in the uh, removal of our windshield wipers. So right here you can use it in kind of the same fashion to push the ball joint on the upper control arms out because you just get a lot of pounding and banging and if if you can you really don't want to do any damage to this area so ideally you'd like to push it so we've got the the gear puller but then what I had to do and I don't think you can really see it on here is we took a small nut and put it on the end of the head of the gear puller right up here so there's a small nut that's in there and this will give us more distance to push uh, the leg up it should is uh, of course I'm videotaping so and in this particular case it mo it probably won't work um, because I need it to work to show how this how this actually goes but you can see if you're watching right here you can see every twist is pushing that ever so slightly up 
and in about five more of these two um, exhaust manifold bolts off of uh, these come off most any Audi 13 millimeter and what I do is I zip tie them together and I push the head of the zip tie inside so because it is a two-hand job I had to set this up but you can see right here we've got the gear puller and then we've got the double stack nuts and then there's the top of the um, the control arm and you can see each spin the control arm is getting forced out there you go and then it just popped out right there it a couple more times and it's just going to pop out but I'm going to try to hold the apparatus so it doesn't go flying. I've got what is a strut spreader tool pretty handy definitely when you're trying to spread the strut assembly like we are here. Um, so when you're trying to get the strut assembly you put your tool in and just real easy turn. Oh wow. And just the whole the whole bottom of the assembly literally. I mean, I loosened the bolts and it almost came right off. So sorry, it was a two-handed job. So I have the strut spreader tool in the spread open position. And I mean I didn't have to do anything. It just it just dropped and loosened almost immediately. Uh, I think we can probably take a little bit more distance off. We'll load off that. And this just, this comes right off. On the other side, we were fighting tooth and nail um, to get the entire strut assembly out. The best thing to do is take off the lower assembly. We've got that, so I'm gonna go up top and loosen the bolts, but First, let me get this situated and I'll come right back. So I just took the three bolts out from up top and I can tell you already, uh, literally a night and day difference by taking off that lower um, control arm assembly. The whole shock apparatus just comes out incredibly easy in, uh, in this configuration. And then you can leave the lower apparatus in there, really no reason to bring it back out, but um, once you have it out, it's, uh, remember your orientation. Okay, so we're back at the um, bench. We have our strut tower assembly here. We actually used the spring compressor on the spring to give us a little bit more room to get the entire unit out. Uh, doing with a spring compressor is you're compressing the spring to take to take the tension off of the cap and the perch. Uh, here's a spring compressor. Anywhere where auto parts or um, anywhere, any auto store or auto parts place should have something like this. It's pretty easy. Just threads right in. There we are. You're going to thread this in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compress the spring again to take the load off. So I'm going to compress the spring right now and then we'll check back in. Alright, so the whole goal was I was monitoring the preload of the spring on the perch and you can see it's, it's come out of the perch here. We've taken enough spring out, so all you're really doing is just waiting until you know that you've removed the spring. 
um, tension. So the next thing that you're going to have to do is, and I showed this a minute ago, next thing you're going to have to do is, you're going to have to get this off, right? This, so there's a nut in there, which is, that nut is an 18 millimeter. So you can actually, if you really, really wanted to, you can take an 18 millimeter on an impact and just bam, hit it and it'll come loose. But you'll notice that here it has a six millimeter Allen key, right? So this stops the shaft from spinning. And ideally, it's not gonna work. Ideally, you wanna get a pass through socket, 18 millimeter, six millimeter Allen, and just do it the right way. So you're gonna hold the shaft with the Allen key and then spin the nut um, with your pass through. So I'm gonna do that right now to loosen it up. Okay, so I got the nut loose, and now the cap will, how about that? All right. Got the nut off. So I'm gonna check the orientation it looks like this perch only goes on this cap one way. Looks like there's a no. yeah, little room for the uh, the bolts to come through um, when this is getting tightened to the body. So something to be mindful of something I try to do as we're kind of moving in on things is to go slow take it apart slow to make sure that we're not missing any uh, any signs or situations that we need to be aware of so we We'll pull our old spring off and then check the orientation versus our new spring. So this is how it came off. So the tight winding goes to the bottom. So our new spring is essentially, let's move this out of the way. So here's our stop. Checking the threads. See anything or feel anything on the shaft that would dictate. So this is just kind of giving you an idea on the reason you've got this here, right? Is that this shaft will spin. And the whole idea of what you're doing with this is just holding this while you tighten that nut down so this shaft isn't just infinitely spinning because um, as you can see it free spins if you didn't have the ability to hold it um, obviously that would be an issue that's why if you just hit it real quick at the impact you can kind of take the tension off uh, and then go from there um, I see no reason to believe that this strut isn't in terrific shape even given the mileage so we're going to be mindful of the perch on the bottom because what's happening is is that this foot wants to set in there so let's set that in there put our new new spring on Let's 
use me wanting to push it past the shield. And then rotate it into the perch, which is how that is. And then obviously again, the same goes up top here. This is, you're gonna want that in, in here. to where this is going to dead end right there. Give a little bit of a look at how that looks. Right? So this is the this is the valley for it to ride on, but now we've got that. Um, just a little side note. This is the dust shield for the travel and then this right here is part of your stopper unit but what I like to do is, is kind of have it how the factory had it if this comes down you have the bare shaft not a great idea uh, depending on where you uh, live as far as geographically snow whatever this just helps be a good dust cover so it's something to make sure you go and tuck it back in there so moving on to the throw the nut back on it it's just tight to fit so you're gonna snug this bolt down until you can get it as snug as you can get it and then that's kind of where you're gonna rest so it's worth going and making sure you put a good amount of force into it because obviously you don't want this loosening up or coming off so I'm gonna tighten it and then we will go from there What I'm going to do right now is I'm using the jack to take load off of the suspension. So ideally when you're going to tighten all these bolts, you want to have your suspension in a neutral state. You want the bolt to go smoothly through the rubber bushing to the point to where you can free spin it up here and up here. And when you know that you can free spin it up here and you can free spin it down here, then you know that you have a, a, a perfect or close to alignment so that when you do tighten uh, the nut and the bolt together, they're gonna tighten correctly. If it's even slightly under load and this bushing uh, is going and, and the geometry isn't right for the bushing, once you tighten it, you're gonna tighten it under load if you don't, uh, if you don't bring the suspension to the ride height. Uh, and then once <clears throat> you put it on the ground, um, you can have a tendency to hear a lot of um, banging. It's not hard, you're just gonna put the shock in and all this really just kind of goes back together in the reverse of how we took it out. So pretty simple. Um, we're gonna finish this off and then get to the back. Okay, so here we are to start doing the rear suspension. So we're back. So here we're taking a look at the um, the rear suspension. Um, there's this trailer arm right here that houses the shock assembly and then separately there is the spring assembly you can see here. We have a lot of connections in there. What I found is going to be the best way is to tackle it back here with this 21 millimeter and then use all of the control arms to keep this in place as we let the arm on this one single bolt pivot back here and the spring out. So the spring sits up on this perch here and here. So to start getting 
to the back of this bolt here, we're going to have to take this, uh, this dust cover off, right? So this dust cover has these push clips that I just showed you right there. Um, and the clips look like this, the end of the clip. I don't know if you can see that. It's a flared fitting. So what I did was I took a 10 millimeter and then if you can see, you take the 10 millimeter socket and then if you push your socket over there, you collapse the walls. So that's how I got in there to remove these clips. want to bore you but uh, if you really want to get this off I thought I'd give you guys kind of a better look on what's going on so in here you can see up here up top how this is flared out and then once you push it through there it locks and then on the car it's locked there on the back there's these tabs here that swivel but I didn't <laughs> I didn't find, you know, I thought maybe turning them would do something. Uh, it didn't. What, what we did was we got our 10 millimeter, and then you just get it on there. And then once you get the 10 millimeter kind of over, it compresses it and then pushes it at each length. We've got a jack here to support this pivot arm as we are going and taking this 21 millimeter nut off for this. So the whole sequence of everything with this is working the bolt out, but you're gonna do that by really finding the sweet spot where you can take the majority of the tension off that bolt. Um, and you're gonna do that by working um, your jack up and down. All right, so what we did was, this bolt comes in this way. We uh, had our jack on this. We've jacked this up. And the geometry of this hole through here is gonna depend where you get this bolt out. This up here is gonna be like literally in the way. When, when you bring this bolt all the way back, you can't see it, but there's a whole bunch of hay there marks on this support. Uh, the bolt will come out. This Here it is, and I did the other side already. Uh, you're just going to have to manipulate the jack up and down to get it to do so. So, as you can see, full extension right here, the spring is still pretty well... <coughs> excuse me, the spring is still pretty well in here. So, at this point, we've got our bolt out. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to get our spring compressor on this. We're going to compress the spring down, and then this leaves us just a little bit of room. But once we compress the spring, it should just slide right out this way. So uh, we're going to get our spring compressor on. I, I went and took the perch out on the bottom and have a spring compressor on there, and boom, just comes out. Didn't have to do a ton of work with the spring compressor. Putting the perch back. Okay, so what we have is, this is the bottom perch, and it's just like on the top spring. You're gonna have to get this part of the spring to bottom out in that area. It's the same on the top as it is the bottom. Uh, I found that if you put the lettering up the correct way uh, it works uh, I want you to pay attention this bolt here's the head of the um, the bolt we reversed it uh, because when it was originally in from the factory the head was on this side we flipped it around obviously to make it way easier to not only insert the bolt but then to tighten it uh, we have our hoist here or our, our jack here uh, we have it in the neutral position. So what neutral basically means is, is that the rubber bushing 
that sits here is as lined up as it can be. When you go and you tighten anything that's got a rubber bushing, you don't want the bushing under tension or you don't want the bushing in, um, in, in, in a gyrated position anyway, yaw or way in, in any situation. So we've created the neutral situation here. Remember, this is 18, 21, not on the other side. We now got, we have our spring in uh, and then we're gonna put the Titan on this and uh, that about wraps it up. Right now, the initial is the wheel gap here went from three and a half inches uh, to now only two inches. In the back, it was three, uh, what was it? I think it was three, yeah, three and um, three quarters inches. Now it's just three inches. Still, it's definitely a lot better than it was. So let's try to get a little bit back here. A little bit better than it was.